another topic that came up was Tom's Hardware, uh, which is a great publication for getting news about new technologies. They do a really good job of reviewing and uh, understanding what some new stuff is. They came around with this interesting headline uh, that says Lenovo's Go wireless charging kit is like chi for your laptop. But at the same time, it has two pogo pins on it. So I, can you help me understand why this is like chi for your laptop? Or was this just kind of a misreported or mismarketed piece of information? Well, I don't think it's true wireless, but it, it is sort of an interesting concept. Okay. Uh, and, and I believe what Lenovo has done is picked up on a technology developed uh, by a company called Energy Square. Mm, all right. um, they're a, uh, a Paris-based startup, a couple of uh, young engineers a few years ago, uh, coming up with an idea of solving kind of the spatial distance that you know wireless charging is striving for but instead of doing it using inductive charging or capacitive charging they actually allow for a dc connection so sure. if you think of a, uh, a, a a checkerboard of metal squares that are all isolated each one of those could be the plus and a minus of a of a battery charger. Sure. And so now if you have a receiving device, a, a, a device you want to charge that has two pogo pins spaced sufficiently apart that have the pins sticking out, you place it on there. And because of this checkerboard, chances are each one of those, those uh, charging pogo pins are going to be sufficiently at a distance where they're going to be on different ones those then become the plus minus charging ports and it'll start charging. And because of that, because those charging ports can vary, you can move it around. Yeah. And so you essentially got a similar experience to what you would see with, <clears throat> with wireless charging from uh, <clears throat> sort of a company like Era today that, that, that does more of a freedom of placement charging yep. path. Yep. Yeah, so uh, there's a few positives in this uh, and then a few negatives as well. So I, the, the obvious positive to me is the freedom of placement with a large device uh, is a challenge. It's hard to take a large device like a laptop and be able to place it freely in an area uh, using inductive or capacitive technology. So using this conductive technology um, seems like they've uh, really provided an option to do that. At the same time, I'm also trying to think about the real challenge that they must have about putting pogo pins on the bottom of a laptop which is gonna be coming in contact with all sorts of surfaces. Um, it's gonna be collecting all sorts of dust and debris. It's going to be consistently being compressed. And so you're using a lot of cycles on those pogo pins. And pogo pins are kind of like a necessary evil right now in the electronic space. In fact, a lot of the reason for inductive power transfer, what we call wireless power transfer, is to get rid of the pogo pins because they, are, uh, they have uh, tolerance issues in manufacturing. They are brittle. They're often the number one cause or number two cause of device failure. So you're taking these kind of brittle, sensitive components and you're putting them in a pretty harsh position on the bottom of a, of a laptop. So it seems like great solution in terms of spatial freedom. And if, and if you really treat the laptop very gingerly, I think that this would be actually a really attractive solution. But it doesn't seem to be something that will have a long-term positive user experience because I think it's going to lead to a lot of breakage and a lot of uh, disappointment in the long term. Am I reading that correctly or do you think pogo pins have come a long way and they can withstand you know, bumps, bruises, scrapes, and dirt and dust? You know, I, I go back to my electronic heritage from 20, 25 years ago, and pogo pins were hated then. I think they're hated just as much today. Yeah. I don't think that's necessarily been solved. Um, you know, there's still, you know, you talk to the electronics industry in general, they're still often the number one pain point yep. with a lot of consumer products. Um, on top of that, I think wireless charging promises the solution of being able to totally seal up a device. Right. Um, and so you don't have water ingress, static damage, um, you know, other stuff leaking in or leaching in. Uh, so you can keep it a totally sealed device and industrial designers like it as well because it looks nice. So I, I think if you look at the solution, what Lenovo has done by picking this up, it, it's almost like they're one toe in the water. I don't mm -hmm. think they're really committing to it. They're, uh, they've announced it as like an accessory feature. So they have the pad, but then they also give you this stick that one side of it's a USB-C, you know, uh, 
like a USB-C port, you plug that in and then wrap it around to the bottom. Ah. It's a real galunky solution. Uh -huh. I just saw, uh, what, in the last week, Lenovo announced the uh, the ThinkPad Extreme Gen 4 laptop. Okay. Now, you would think that, you know, this was announced, what, about a month or so ago, um, that the new version of laptop might incorporate this, but they don't. Yeah. Um, this is still kind of left as an accessory. Let's see how it goes in the marketplace, if there's any pickup on it. And if it goes, they may incorporate it more. If not, you know, it may kind of die on the vine. That makes a lot of sense to me because we have uh, a good number of our customers, probably over half of them, one of the reasons they're switching to wireless power is to eliminate pogo pins or to yeah. fully seal their devices. So it just seemed curious to me that Lenovo would be going the other direction, which is creating new paths of ingress by putting pogo pins onto their laptops. Makes sense that it's more of a dongle solution right now. They're trying to just see if there's interest here. But again, overall, I, I do think it's interesting that the, this really introduces spatial freedom. So I always like progress doesn't all come at once. You know, you have to take steps and get there. And um, I think that what Lenovo is doing is interesting and could provide a nice user experience if they can figure out the durability and robustness issues with pogo pins. Like you said, it's been at least a couple decades of a problem. So that's a pretty big yeah. mountain to climb to fix that problem, but it's not impossible. Yeah. And I'll like say it's one of those things that's the amazing thing about the marketplace is everybody's coming up with a solution. Yep. A lot of times, you know, we predict what's going to make it and what's not. And a lot of times we're wrong, sometimes we're right, yep. but the market will ultimately decide. Absolutely. You have to meet them where they are or where their consumers are. Yeah. Absolutely.